This is an antique Ansonia Syria mantle clock from the 1880s. This clock has been in my workshop before, about three, four years ago. I serviced it and it's come back in for oiling and a general checkup. So that's what we'll be doing today. First thing we do before we take a movement to pieces is to remove the hands from the clock. Undo that nut. There at the moment, get a couple of fingernails underneath and it lifts out easily. The same for the hour hand if it decides to come off. Right, that's a bit hard. We'll have to put a, a hand puller on that. This is a hand puller. We slide the jaws underneath the hand and very gently rotate it left and right till the hand comes off. Right, now we can take the movement out. Turn the clock over. That's the original paper label, eight day Syria. Striking clock. And that's a movement in the case. Take the pendulum out. And that's the striking gong. Right, let's remove it from the case. You can see the movement's in pretty good nick. The movement was completely overhauled last time it was in here. Take the screws out. Then we can easily remove the movement. And there's the movement. Before we let the tension down on the springs, always put a hand, the minute hand, on the movement and turn it round once or twice to make sure that the movement is working properly. That way we can catch any problems before we get much further we know what we have to do. Just gone into warning. Half an hour. Continue round. Gone into warning. One o'clock. Warning. Half past one. Warning. Two o'clock. Well, that seems to be pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Those in there too. Right, now, need a lift down tool and some mainspring clamps. So, 
we'll see what size clamp we need. Probably if we tighten that up. I'll tighten the going side first. We can see what size we're going to need. mainspring clamp that is almost it a little bit more and that'll be a good tight fit so clamp on Right, it's now loose, so we now need to let the spring down onto the clamp. For that we're going to need a let down tool, one of those, number eight, more likely to be number six, we'll see what we got. It's five, all right, near enough. Now it's pretty hard to see because a click is down inside there so I'll talk you through it but you're not going to be able to see it now to let the spring down we wind it up a tiny bit the screwdriver onto the click and hold it back let the let down tool roll in your hand a while and we'll take it off and check and the clamp is about right put it in the center I'll continue to let that down the clamp will contain all this power in the spring Push the click back, let it spin in your hand. First one done. Right, round to the going side. Got a bit more to tighten up. See how that looks. Too big. Got to go a bit more yet. Try it once again. Slide the clamp on. Tighten up some more. It's about as far as it'll go by the feel of it. Clamp on. Round and push it down a bit. And it's holding there. Right, now we'll let down the spring, 
once again. The let down tool. Put some pressure on it as if you're going to tighten it a bit. Screwdriver. Under the click, hold it out. Let the let down tool spin round. I think the clamp has moved a bit. Yep, we'll have to tighten that up a little bit more. It's down the bottom, we want it in the center. A little bit tight. That's better. Moving a bit now. Push it into the center. There it is. So we let that down. That's got it. Power in each spring is now contained. We can now start to take the movement to pieces. We'll remove the pendulum leader first. Push this tapered pin out. Put it aside. Turn it out. Remove it from the crutch. Now we'll take this piece off. That's the fast, slow adjustment. Off there. That goes there. That out. Okay, now we want to find a spanner that fits those. Let's get six. Sevens, here we go. Yep, seven's what we want. And then very slowly Remove the back plate. As usual, there might be a little bit of pressure in the train, in the spring, so we've got to be a bit careful. The last one down here. All right. Here we go. The 
crutch, the pallets. There's over there. Plate goes there. And that is the movement. You can see it's pretty clean, considering it's been about four, probably four years since I last worked on it. It certainly kept its cleanliness. Part of that is, is of course, because it hasn't been over oiled. They, the owners haven't touched it. They brought it back to me to oil. They haven't been squirting oil all over it, and the stuff runs everywhere. First, we remove the hammer. Put it over there. Then the going side mainspring, the first wheel. My special little block here that I put the wheels in in order when they come out. First wheel, second wheel, scope wheel, third wheel. Now we'll take off the strike side spring. Always a little bit tight to get out. We'll remove a few of these first. Take the fly out, warning wheel, second wheel, this is the one that the hammer strikes on, Is tight. Lift lever out. First wheel. Strike side, Cannon Arbor, take that one out. And that is our bottom plate. What we'll do now, we'll put one train at a time and check to make sure that the bushes and the pivots are okay. Going train first. First wheel, second wheel, third 
third wheel and the escape wheel. Now we'll put the top plate on. Line it up with the two posts there. Put a nut on each of those. Loosely to hold them in place. Now we can put the pivots into the bushings. A tiny bit. Got him. First wheel, a little bit tighter. Second wheel, put the escape wheel in. Second wheel again has come out. Third wheel. And there we go. Tighten that nut. Spin it to make sure it's all in place properly. Put another nut on the top there. Tighten it down, hand tight will be sufficient. Now we can have a look at the, the pivots and the bushes and see what we got. First, first wheel here, it's alright. Nice and tight. Someone did a good job on bushing that, and I don't know who that'd be. That side's good. Do this side. Yep. Second wheel. Yep. Scape wheel. Now, in play, moving backwards and forwards, second wheel, third wheel, first wheel. That's what it's supposed to be like when you do your job properly and not just slap it together and any old rubbish will do. That's been working for at least three years on those bushings. There's almost zero sign of wear on them. All right, we'll take that side out.
Undo the nuts again. Remove the top plate. Out it comes. Put the wheels back again. First wheel. Second wheel. Third wheel. Escape wheel. Now for the strike side. First wheel. Second wheel. Warning wheel. and the fly. Top plate back on again. Line it up with the post at the bottom. A nut on each. Loosely to hold it. Now we'll put the pivots into the bushes. First wheel. Second wheel's down there. Got that one. Warning wheel, and the fly. Spin it to make sure we're right. Nut on the top, tighten the other two. Hand tight is all we need. See what we got. Okay, let's have a look at some bushes. First one there. Second wheel. Third wheel, the warning wheel, and the fly right on the end. Turn him over. Fly. Third wheel. First wheel. Second wheel. Right now we'll check for end plate, so we slide them along, plate, warning wheel, third wheel, second wheel in there. running very smoothly. Right, we'll take that out.
laid off. Put them back in the correct order again. Second wheel, first wheel. Now we'll put the hammer in. That little piece of wire wound around that arbor is a spring. That piece there, that little piece on the end, once we put it together, we'll clip it over the top plate and that'll keep a little bit of pressure on the hammer to return it to its correct position. So, it goes in there, like so. Now we've got to put the lift lever in. That one there, same thing, got a spring that ties around that post up there. We'll do that once it all goes together. That's the count lever. It has to go down onto the count wheel. Way down in here. It looks like it might be easier to put it in if I remove the going side train. I'll do that. And then come back once I've got the going side train in again. I'll put the top plate on so we can now start to put the wheels in place. One's out a bit. Gotta get him in first before any of the others start to fall into place. Loosen the nuts up a little bit. Go and get this guy in. That's about it, I think. And we can align. That other post. Now, what do we got in here? Oops, nuts come off. Put that back on again and hold it. And start working from the bottom. Hammers in. Make sure we got all uh, that's got it now. First wheel, first wheel on goes in there. Tiny bit out. Got him. Make sure we got our lifting lever. 
in its place. Oh, first wheels come out again. That's right, that's right, that's right there. Escape wheel in. A bit better. Second wheel into here. seem to be okay. Now over to the going side. I mean over to the strike side. Didn't. Second wheel's a bit tight. Will that come out the other end? Yes, it has. Now the pivots come out. Up. Oop, fell out again. There. First wheel. Got him. Oh, that's right, that's all into place there. That one. That one. Scope wheels in. Now, what have we got? Okay, that's there, that's there, that's come out again. That's in place. The third wheel. All right. Now, put a nut on that for a moment. So it doesn't all drop out again. Let's have a look and see what we got. Yeah, yeah, no one. Right. Over here, first wheel's out. First wheel. Second wheel.
get those levers look about right. Over a shot. Yep, I want. Is that in or not? Not. Okay. Leave us in. And that. Nut on that, I'll loosen the other side off. Check them, loosen that off. wheels in, second wheel, third wheel is going to have to go into there. It's all very tight, it should That's looking better for the moment. Now, we've got the warning wheel and the fly to put in yet, but we've got to set up the rest of the clock first. That's a going train. Yeah. We've got the count lever in a deep hole on the count wheel. See this. There we go. On this lever here, being the lift lever, you can see that this arm there, that's better. Is in that gap there at the top of it. Right. That's the first two things we've got to do. Now we've got to put... Turn that over. Keep that down. Loosen that off a little bit. We've got to put the warning wheel in now. into there. But we're not ready to put it in yet because that pin there has to catch
on the lever there. Get that aligned. That's in. That's in. Come on. Now we have to put the fly in. The fly goes there. Up under the plate. In. That's in. Warning wheel. Let's make a little bit. Warning wheel. the fly. Right. Put a nut on that. We'll have a look and see what we've got. That's the going train. You can see they've all been installed properly, spinning freely. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about antique and vintage clock repair, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.